Hi friends, today we are doing Unit 2, Lesson 6, From Water to Land. We are going to go over the key vocabulary words you will be hearing in the reading today first. So our first word is amphibian, which is an animal that can live on land and in water. Our second word is shed, which means to drop, cast off, or separate from something. And our last word is transformation, which means changing appearance. We are now going to move into our reading for today. I'm back everybody and today I've brought some excellent slides of Tabitha Toad and Paolo Piranha to show you so we can compare how scientists classify them in the taxonomy of animals. Tabitha is not a fish but she and Paolo are similar in many ways. It's true that Tabitha and Paolo don't look very much alike but as the saying goes you can't judge a book by its cover. When classifying animals scientists often search for similarities as well as differences. One similarity one similarity between Tabitha and Paolo is that, as you know, they are both members of the animal kingdom. You've learned that scientists classify animals as cold-blooded or warm-blooded. Does anyone know to which category Tabitha belongs? Do you think that her body maintains a constant internal temperature like yours, or does her temperature adjust to her surroundings like a fish? Yes, her body temperature fluctuate, fluctuates, so she is classified as a cold-blooded animal like Paolo. That's another way that they are similar to one another. They are both animals and they are both cold-blooded. Now take a closer look at Tabitha Toad. Can you tell just by looking at her whether she is cold-blooded or warm-blooded? No, but once you learn a bit more about her habits, you will understand how scientists determine that she is cold-blooded. You know that scientists also classify animals according to whether or not they have backbones. Think about what you learned about Tabitha's backbone. Yes, there it is. Just like you and Paolo, Tabitha has vertebrae, a column of bones, all down her back. Who remembers what scientists call animals with backbones? Right, she's a vertebrae. So Paolo and Tabitha are both cold-blooded vertebrae. Does anyone remember any other fish characteristics? Good answers. Make a prediction about which characteristics Tabitha shares with Paolo. Do Tabitha and other toads have gills, scales, or fins? Do they lay eggs or live in water? These are rather tricky questions because toads belong to a group of animals that change during their lifetime. Their bodies change, their habits change, and their habitats change. I'm going to share a lot of information with you today. So get ready for some miraculous surprises. Before we go any further, I want to introduce the name of Tabitha Toad's group of animals. Some of you may know it already. How do scientists classify toads? Yes, they are members of a class of animals known as amphibians. Most amphibians spend part of their lives in water and part on land. Toads love the water. Like all amphibians, Tabitha began her life as an aquatic animal living in water. She spends most of her time on dry land now. In fact, she loves the woodlands. But every spring, she makes her way to a small freshwater pond in the wetland. First, she will lay eggs. Just before I took this picture, she laid a few thousand eggs in the shallow water. Toads must lay their eggs in water because their soft jelly-like coverings can easily dry out in the air. Come and see. Most of the eggs will never hatch. Can anyone think of why this is so? There are many ways that eggs can be destroyed, by becoming a tasty meal for a predator, being washed away in a flood, or drying up if there's not enough rain. Next, a few hundred toads' eggs will hatch into tadpoles. Tadpoles have gills, just like fish, and use their gills to breathe underwater. They are herbivores and eat tiny aquatic plants, but they are in constant danger because other fish can swallow them whole. Then the tadpoles will morph or change into very different looking creatures, young amphibians with very different habits. This transformation process of changing appearance from one stage to another is called metamorphosis. Skin has covered their gills and they grew lungs for breathing air on land. Tiny legs have also appeared. Then the tadpoles will morph or change into very different looking creatures, young amphibians with very different habits. Last, young amphibians will grow into adult toads. Those amphibians that survive to adulthood will be hopping and crawling around on land searching for food just like Tabitha. Plant life will no longer interest them. Instead, they'll snatch up bugs, 
worms, spiders, and slugs with their sticky tongues. Most adult amphibians are carnivores. Some of the toad's larger relatives, like bullfrogs, even eat small mammals and birds. The world's biggest frog is the West African Goliath frog. It is the size of a pet cat and eats other frogs, baby crabs, and snakes. Frogs and toads are the largest group of amphibians. Because they have so many of the same characteristics, many people have a difficult time telling them apart. The main difference between them is that toad's skin is a bit drier than frog skin. Remember that although together they make up the largest group of amphibians, they are not the only group of amphibians. Most scientists generally agree that amphibians evolved from an early group of fish with lobed or fleshy fins hundreds of millions of years ago, long before the dinosaurs. Scientists continue to study fossil remains, trying to figure out the exact way in which this slow change occurred over a long period of time. Next time we meet, you will learn all about the way scientists classify snakes like Anna Anaconda. I'll give you a hint. Remember when I said that salamanders are often mistaken for lizards? But that lizards belong to a different group of animals? Well, Anna belongs to the same group of li as lizards. Does anyone want to predict the name of that group? Wait and see if you're right. For now, I want to congratulate you all on being such good sleuths or detectives. Any taxonomist would love to have your help in classifying Earth's animals. See you soon. You may now move on to Unit 2, Lesson 6, Google Form.